We're looking at two 2D detailing and or sectional detailing. In this case, we're talking about it as a wall section, but we're looking at not just the wall, we're looking at the roof, we're looking at the floor, ground floor, we're looking at how it connects to the ground, and we also will be talking about a first floor connection as well. Up until now, we've been looking at a concrete slab because most commonly, we're going to be using concrete slabs when we're doing new builds. However, if you're working on an alteration and addition, so an old building where you're doing work to it, you might be instead looking at a framed floor, a timber frame floor. Now, it's very, very unlikely that you're going to be doing a new framed floor. You'd probably be doing a concrete slab, but if you have to adjoin, if you have to connect to, an existing frame floor, or if you need to adjust an existing timber frame floor, it's really important that you understand what that looks like. So in terms of this diagram here, so this is a two-dimensional detail. This is all done again with lines and fills. Now we're not seeing the relationship of the ground here, but this is just to explain some of the components. In this case, we're seeing that it's a, a sloping site, right? So the idea is that the footing goes in the ground. It's not sloping quite this steep, but the idea is that you might not always have a flat bit of ground, so the way that you're dealing with the floor might change in different circumstances. And this is a slightly tricky one, because in this case we're saying that there is a change in floor from a bathroom floor to a internal floor. Now that, this is a bit of a rough start, so I'll explain this uh, in a bit more detail later. Uh, I'll explain it properly. But what we're seeing here is that we've got ground and then we've got a concrete strip footing that's sitting in the ground. We have a brick wall, which is a subfloor, and then that turns into a brick wall above ground level. We have an engaged pier, so we have bricks that are sitting below, or a bearer that is sitting on the bricks, ant capping. Then we have a joist that's sitting on the bearer, and then we have some type of flooring that's sitting on top of that. Now in this case here, we're looking at a compressed fiber cement, uh, tile bed, and then tile. And the point here is that this is a bathroom, and so we want to have a floor that's draining. And here we've got a joist, sorry, a bearer, a joist, structural flooring, and then some type of finished timber flooring on top. And now again, this isn't perfect. We're gonna move over here and have a look at a more perfect way of understanding this. So this is a zoomed in area, just looking at that one particular space. Now what we're seeing here is a section, but when we're looking in section, some things will be in elevation. Because when we're drawing a concrete, sorry, when we're drawing a brick subfloor wall, we don't cut through the instance, or we don't cut through the column or the pier, because that's irregular. We want to cut through the regular. So what we're seeing here is that we're cutting through this wall, and so that's a single skin brick wall, and we're cutting through this wall, which is of course the timber frame part. We're cutting through the floor, well of course we're cutting through elements of the floor, so we're cutting through, in this case the joist, we're not cutting through the bearer, we are cutting through the floor ring, so in this case, this is representing plywood or particle board. And we are cutting through the hardwood flooring that's sitting on top of that. Let me turn my magnet on so I can click on this properly for you. There you go. We're not cutting through the ant cap and we're not cutting through the footing. So let's have a look at this in plan to better understand what it is that we're looking at. We might need to do this as a saved view. All right. So this is what a plan of that subfloor might look like. If we go up a story, this is what the ground floor plan looks like. So it's just a bedroom, a ensuite, a walk-in robe, an extension of this room here, which is the study. And then of course there's the rest of the house, which we don't really need to worry about awfully very much because it's different. Now, this floor is done in a similar way, but in a more traditional method. Now again, it's all a timber frame floor, meaning that its structure is basically this type of relationship, where we have a, a brick wall that runs around the outside. We have a footing, a concrete footing. In this case, it's a continuous strip footing. And then we have brick piers, which support the bearers, so in this case, we've got a bearer, which is running from brick pier to brick pier. 
We've got engaged peers. So an engaged peer means when it's against the wall or on the outside. And then we have isolated peers. So the isolated peer is when there is a, a brick peer, or in this case, a steel peer, so a steel uni peer that's supporting the bearer. The bearers then support the joists, and then of course the joists support the flooring. So the spanning ability of the flooring, in a way, determines the spacing of the joists. So here we can see if we go from center to center, these joists are set up at 450 millimeter centers. Again, we've talked about this. 450 is a nice increment based on a 300 millimeter increment. Now, of course, we can say 300 doesn't go into 450, but if we times 450 by two, 900, then of course we get 300, 600, 900. So that means that we could be using a sheet width of 900. We could be using a sheet width of 1200. And of course, we can be using a sheet length of anything that goes into that. And so we might be looking at 2400, 2700, 3000, 3300, 3600. So in terms of the lengths of our sheet, it's all possible. Now to make this a little bit more complicated, what we see happening here is that we have two different types of floors. And so we have two different sizes of joists or two different positions of joists and two different bearers. Because in this case, we're wanting to lower the floor of the bathroom so that we don't have to step up from the bedroom into the bathroom because of course we know that we need to build up the floor underneath the bath. Let's have a look at how that detail works. Probably don't need, don't need to go into this, I can just show you here. So the concept here is that we're using this 150 by 45 LVL floor joist and we're using the same joist here, but it's set down. And we're using LVLs for the bearers as well. So in this case, we have a 150 by 63. So we often find that a bearer might be thicker than a joist. Now, when we're tr using traditional flooring, it's probably not LVLs because of course LVLs haven't been around for that long because it's an engineered timber product. We were using generally hardwood. So hardwood bearers and often hardwood joists. Now, hardwood takes a long time to grow, which means it's not sustainable to use for this type of use. And it's not really easy to work with because it's very hard to nail or screw into. It's very hard to cut. It's very heavy to move around. It takes a long time to grow. And therefore, for all of those factors, it's quite expensive. So we don't want to use hardwood anymore. So even though the existing part of this house used hardwood for the bearers and joists, we don't need to copy it exactly. We just need to make the floor work. We need to make it level. We need to make it flush. And so in this case, we can use LVLs to create the structure for this floor. But we want to think about this not necessarily the way it was built, but maybe in the best possible way. And so in this case, we're not continuing to use brick piers. We're using a steel uni pier. We're not using hardwood bearers and joists. We're using LVL bearers and joists. And we're not making the floor run flush all the way through. So it means that the bathroom has to be stepped up into. In this case, we're stepping the joists for the bathroom down. We're not building the structural floor of the bathroom out of timber which is often done in old houses, we're building it out of fiber cement or compressed fiber cement. In this case, we're using a product called James Hardy Skyon Secura. And we're allowing a really thick bed for our mortar, which means that when we step from our bedroom to our bathroom, the relationship between the top, and the top of the tile and the top of the timber is perfect. Now there's some elements that I haven't added here technically and so there needs to be a water stop angle and I haven't represented the waterproofing at the moment. This was really in terms of the level of detail that we're currently up to just about explaining the step. Now we're going to be having a look at how to create these and so this is why we're looking at it now. I'm showing you one that I've already done and then we're going to walk through this process and explain it from a building point of view and explain it from a drawing point of view. This is the other side of this floor. So we have the bedroom stepping down into the bathroom and then we have the bathroom on the other side. So just again to explain this properly and how it all works, our brick wall, our timber frame wall, we have our 
engaged pier, meaning it's connected into the brick, but we're not seeing it in section. So in this case, we're not seeing the brick with the double slash line, which is representing a section or cut through the brick. We're seeing the brick in elevation because we're viewing this pier, this engaged pier in elevation. Here I've got two bearers, just to make this a little bit stronger and make it easier to build. So we've got a taller bearer, a 240 by 45, and that means that we can span between the piers. And we've got a smaller bearer, a 90 by 45, which will be screwed with big bugles into the other bearer. So it makes them basically one beam. Once we screw them together sufficiently, it makes that beam stronger, but it means that we can sit this joist onto this bottom bearer. And if we wanted to, we could also hang it off the larger bearer, again, using some type of a bracket like this. Now to make this a little bit more interesting or complicated than in previous details that we've drawn, in this case, it's not a plasterboard interior wall lining, it's tiled because it's a bathroom. And in this case, we've got fiber cement on the inside. So we've got frame, fiber cement, that's again, not quite perfect. We need to be showing adhesive and then tile. We've got our framed wall. And then on the outside of the framed wall, we've got OSB, orientated strand board, or it could, of course it could be plywood as well. And then we've got a cavity. So this is just an extra level of detail that we could go to if we're trying to make our building either more thermally well-performing or potentially fire. Because for this particular detail, we're dealing with a flame zone bow rating, so the highest level of bow rating. All right, so we'll go back to the detail that we've been drawing. So at the moment, we've been working with a concrete floor, with a brick veneer wall, and with a timber framed roof, and we deliberately haven't added any roof cladding or lining yet because it could be metal or it could be tiled. So we're trying to keep it all common at the moment. And so we're going to start to look at the different options of how we can vary this detail or create copies of this detail and then use it to create some other options. And so we're going to sub substitute the concrete structural floor or raft slab for a suspended timber frame floor and look at what those other elements are that we need to make that change. We're going to look at a suspended timber frame floor, but not for ground, but for first, and how that differs. And we'll look at some other options for external lining. So instead of being a brick veneer, we'll look at an option of an autoclave aerated cement or hebel panel. And we'll also look at a weatherboard cladding. And so that'll be the next few tutorials that we'll be looking at today.